Hi everybody, welcome back to Right to the Top, I'm Adam. Today's video is the third in a mini series that I've created about the common errors that people make in the writing section of the IELTS. Today's video, we're going to look at the letter, the task one letter, for those of you taking the general exam. Even if you're not taking the general test, you're taking the academic or TOEFL or whatever, still a good idea to watch this video, get a little listening practice, and even get some tips when that you can apply to your emails or to other everyday situations where you need to communicate, especially with native speakers. So we're going to look at the five most common errors, again, based on a lot of assessments that I've personally seen and worked on and helped with uh, students deal with, okay? So we're going to start with the same number one error that people make as the other two, ignoring the scoring criteria. Now, just because it's a letter or a summary or an essay does not mean that you're only concentrating on vocabulary and grammar. There are lots of other things to consider, especially your task achievement, the content, what are you saying, the ideas you have, etc. The cohesion and coherence, making sure that ideas connect and progress from one to the next, from beginning to end. Lexical resource, vocabulary, grammatical range, and accuracy. You can get a little bit more detail in the essay portion of the videos I made. Here, I just wanted to say a couple of other things. Make sure that you have good ideas when it comes to your letters. A lot of people have a hard time thinking about what to say. They're given a context. They're given, you're given a situation. You still have to come up with a bit of a story from your imagination. So make sure you practice working on your ideas because these are very important for your task achievement. And for the essay as well, you have to have ideas. That's a big component of the test. So remember, writing is not just about words and grammar. It's about communication. Make sure you can communicate well. And again, remember that the whole section, the whole writing test is scored holistically. They're looking at the whole piece of writing and how everything works together, including vocabulary, including grammar, including ideas, including doing what you're asked to do. It all works together and you can lose points for the same writing mistake in different categories. So be very careful about that. And again, there's a link below to the official scoring guides from the IELTS website. Make sure you look at these and I will make a video course about how to score their IELTS writing section. Okay, but having said that, let's get on to some other points. Now, a very common mistake that people make is they start writing all kinds of things and the person receiving the letter doesn't really know what, what's going on, right? It's very important that you get right to the purpose of the letter in your first sentence. Again, this is for formal and semi-formal letters. For the informal letters, for the casual letters, you can have a little bit of a chit-chat, a little bit of a small talk before you get to the purpose of the letter. But make sure you have a purpose. Now, the easiest way to see it is to think about what it is you're actually trying to do. I'm writing in regard to or regarding something or about something. Very general opening sentence. What are you writing about? I'm writing in response to your letter or in response to your request or in response to your invitation, etc. You're answering something that you received from the person. I'm writing to inform you, to request, to complain, to let you know. Make sure you understand the purpose of the letter and make sure the reader understands right away the purpose of the letter. With uh, something more casual, I just wanted to let you know I'm coming to your city next month. I'd love to. Uh, meet you for a drink in a more casual letter. Otherwise, get to the point quickly. So let's look at a quick example. The task is write a letter to an airline manager to find out about something you forgot on the plane during your travel. So this is a student sample. I'm writing to inform you about my bag, which I left on the plane from wherever to wherever. I hope you could help me to find it. First of all, you have two sentences essentially saying the same thing. Right? Be very direct, very simple, and then concentrate more on the details in the body paragraph. An easier way to write this is one sentence. I'm writing to request help in finding my bag, which I left on my flight from A to B. Right? Get to the point, get more details, elaborate more in the body paragraphs. Very, very important. A lot of people don't do this. 
and they lose points for cohesion and coherence uh, in their scoring criteria. Now, another thing that a lot of people have a problem with is recognizing the necessary tone. Is this a formal letter? Is this a semi-formal letter? Is this a casual or informal letter? Basically, think about who you're writing to. A formal letter is cold and it's very neutral. There are no emotions involved. You don't, generally, you don't know the person. This is why it's called a cold letter. You're introducing yourself or you're writing to somebody you don't even know who is receiving it. It's just some anonymous person in a company or in a place, etc. So the unknown recipient will always be formal. Semi-formal. This is very similar to formal, except it's semi-cold because you know the person that re will receive the letter, but you're not friends with this person. You have some sort of relationship. Obviously, you have met before, you have spoken before, but you have a very professional relationship. So this could be your boss. Now, again, it depends. Some people are very friendly with their bosses, in which case you could write informally. Generally speaking, with your boss, semi-formal. Friendly, but professional. So it doesn't have to be too cold, but it shouldn't be too warm either. Your landlord, you pay this person rent every month. Obviously, you've spoken to this person, he or she interviewed you before giving you the apartment. So you have some sort of relationship. You could be a little bit casual, but mostly formal in your writing. Now, if you want to see samples of the different types of writing, I put some links up here to some old videos you can watch about that. Informal, be very warm. It's a friend, it's an acquaintance. You can use casual language. You can be more friendly with it. But again, recognize who will receive your letter and then adjust the tone to match. Make sure that you open and close appropriately. You're not going to write, uh, hey, Mr. Smith, to somebody you're applying to a job for, right? You're going to write, dear Mr. John Smith, because this is a very formal situation. And you're going to close. See ya to a friend, best regards to uh, somebody more formal. And again, formal and casual language, you should know by now what the difference between that is. Now, another thing that you have to be very careful about, and this is very, one of the reasons people have a problem with this is because they're preparing so much for the essay that they forget that these are two very different styles of writing. The letter and the essay, very different styles of writing. So make sure you don't use academic vocabulary and academic structures in your letter. What does this mean? It means it's not an essay, so don't have topic sentences for your paragraphs. Your paragraph about the details is your details. You don't need it to introduce it. Just get right to the point. You don't need to have uh, transitions into the next paragraph. Just get to the next piece of information you want to convey. Just state what you have to state and move on. You don't need to be too formal about the writing style. And don't use big words in a letter because you just want the person to be able to read quickly and get your point quickly. And I'll show you an example of what I mean. You don't have a thesis. You're not, the thesis is I am writing to let you know. That's your thesis, that's your purpose. Stated clearly, quickly, get to the uh, details. You don't have an introduction, you don't have a conclusion. What you do have is a purpose. I am writing to inform you and you have a call to action. Please let me know as soon as possible. Please call me back. Please send me whatever it is. What do you want the person to do, right? And use everyday words. Everyday words meaning not academic words, not big sophisticated words that you will see in university. Everyday words, even in formal writing, keep it simple and easy to read, okay? And again, I'll show you an example. This is a student sample. Now, I'll give you a bit of a background. This is a person writing to a friend to let the friend know about his new job. So right away, it should be very casual and very warm. Recently, I've re decided to change my job and seek employment in another company in which I can develop myself both individually and professionally. During my previous employment, I was engaged as a site engineer, which didn't prove to be effective in terms of job satisfaction and personal income. This is very formal sounding, very academic sounding, almost like this person is writing an essay. However, my new job is in the field of bridge design engineering, 
With my new employment, there are professional demands that I haven't encountered before, like computational calculations and engagement with various drafting software. Very detailed, very explain. like this person is explaining very much in a very formal way what is happening. This person is writing to a friend. It should be very casual, should be very simple and to the point. Also, way too many words here. Your letter is short. Keep it simple. Here's how I rewrote this in one paragraph. Recently, I've decided to change jobs and look for something that will let me grow professionally. That's your main idea. In my last job, previous employment is too formal. My last job is to a friend. I was a site engineer, but that wasn't really satisfying and didn't pay well. My new job is designing bridges. It's challenging since I had to do things I've never done before, like computational calculations and using different kinds of drafting software, but I'm getting the hang of it pretty quickly. Getting the hang of it is a very casual expression. Getting the hang of it means starting to understand it pretty easily. You're writing to a friend, be friendly. You're writing to a potential employer, be formal, right? Make sure you know the tone, make sure you know what words to use, what expressions to use. Don't write an essay, write a letter, okay? That's a very common mistake people make. And last one, and I mentioned this already, the call to action. Remember I said don't have an introduction and conclusion, have a purpose and a call to action. Don't forget a call to action for the letter. Now you may have a something to explain to the person based on the task, the task wants you Tell the manager what you want him or her to do. Fine, do that. But don't forget to close the letter. What do you want the person to do in response to the letter, not the situation? Two different things, right? How should the, res the recipient respond to the letter? Should he call you back? Should he send something? Should he notify you of something? Should he do nothing? What should the recipient expect next? Maybe the recipient doesn't know, need to do anything, but you will do something. Let that person know what you are going to do next, if anything at all. What is your expectation? What do you want the person to do in response to the letter? Not the situation that's given in the task, the letter. Should he reply? Should he wait? Should he call? Etc. Let's look at an example. Since the suitcase is no longer useful, this is a student sample. Since the suitcase is no longer useful, I wish to receive a complete refund for the total value of the suitcase, which is 99 pounds. I look forward to your reply. Yours faithfully, etc. So this person wrote a company that damaged uh, the suitcase in the travels. In response to the situation, he wants a refund. In response to the letter, I look forward to your reply. Well, how is the manager going to reply? Is he going to send a letter back? Is he going to call? Is he going to send the money? What is he going to do? Now, yours faithfully, I'm not sure. This person seems a little bit angry. The company damaged his suitcase. He's a little bit angry. He might not be so faithful. He might not use this company to travel with again. It's a bus company, if that makes any difference. If I'm this person and this bus company damaged my suitcase, I'm probably not using this bus company again, right? So this closing is not exactly what I would use. Everything, the last paragraph is okay. The closing is a little bit different. Please send a check or contact me for my bank details. So I want you to send me the money. Send, send it by check or into my bank. I look forward to your reply. Obviously they have my name, I'm on record. They can check my uh, invoice. Best regards, or oh, there should be a comma after regards. I don't know if you can see that, the red here. And then best regards, very professional, close it off. I'm not your friend, I'm not going to use your service again, but I'm still being polite and professional about this and my name. Okay, so that is all there is to this closing. Make sure that you have a closing is the bottom line and a lot of people forget that as well. Okay, so that is all there is to the letter. Make sure that you try to avoid making these mistakes. Make sure you know how the scoring is done so you're not surprised when you get the score that you get. Not all grammar, not all vocab, although obviously very important. If you have any questions about any of this, you can ask below in the YouTube comment section. You can talk to each other, try to help each other out. You can also go to my Instagram or Facebook page and ask questions there as well. You can also join my Facebook reading and writing group and you can help each other improve your reading and writing skills in a community of like-minded individuals, okay? now. 
Uh, if you like this video, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification icon so you know when a new video is coming up. And come back again for more tips on how to do well with the writing for the IELTS, TOEFL, or any other test. Okay? See you again soon. Bye-bye.